In today's video, I am going to be breaking down a player named Kaman Maluk, and I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, but this is an amazing basketball player. He just committed to Duke, and he is going to be potentially a third round, maybe even a second round, or sorry, third pick, maybe second pick in next year's NBA draft. So this is a player who is very, very good in the low post, but also out on the perimeter. So if you are a center looking to extend your range, this is a good player to kind of model your game after and maybe take a few things from. So let's get down and let's check him out. Okay, so right here, he gets that ball out on the corner, out on the perimeter. What does he do first? Well, he does do a quick fake, and then when he attacks the rim, he takes a second dribble. Two dribbles total. This is how many dribbles, in my opinion, you should be allowed to take when attacking the rim. If you take a third dribble, you're getting a help defender stealing it from you. If you take a fourth dribble, you're probably already lost the ball. So, two dribbles max. He then spins off the baseline. Why is this important? Well, if you are in that spot, you're probably not going to be able to score very well. You need to get off the baseline. There's two reasons. One, it's hard to score from behind the backboard, but guess what? It's also a trap spot right there. Whether it's a, you're playing up against a man or a zone, this is where they want to trap you because the backboard is going to take away all of your passing lanes out to this wing. All you're going to be able to pass to is out here, and everyone should be in position to be able to pick off your pass. So, he was very smart by spinning off of that double team, and then he was able to go up with his left hand. He's able to use both his right and left hand in that low post. And by simply having that two dribble attack and then the spin move at the end in your bag is extremely important, and before anyone says that this is a travel, obviously they are playing overseas, which means that they are using FIBA rules, you're allowed to take two steps. And while I understand you may be saying right here where he lifts his pivot foot refs don't see that i also like the fact right here and that is when this player his momentum is going this way his his chest is pointing this way come on is then able to then do the spin move but he locks arms this is something that you can do now he doesn't lock them all that well this arm is able to go straight and this defender was able to then recover quite well however just by doing a quick lock while this can be technically called an offensive foul if you are not caught doing it you will then get away with it and that can delay that defender by milliseconds which can allow you to get shots like this off in the low post he has also got a jump shot it's actually a pretty good shot as well when he's going up for a shot he does bring his knees in and i know there's a lot of nba players who do that there's a lot of old school coaches who will say that this causes injuries not too sure if it can cause injuries however for some players it does give them a little bit more power from outside and we can see that he's got a nice high release and if we back up just a bit, his shoulder and elbow are in line with the rim, which gives him a straight shot. And at least half or a quarter of that ball is over top of his upper arm, which allows for a straight shot. Overall, he's got a pretty good shooting form. Even though he lifts the ball more than actually shoots it like most players, it works for him. The one thing that does kind of bother me is this right here. And this actually has happened a few of, in a few of his highlights, it's not just this one, where he gets an alley-oop and he tries to go for that, that layup, but misses the layup. Now here he gets the put-back jam. And I know he's young, so I'm not making fun of him at all, but being a young player, this is going to happen once he gets a little bit older, like maybe a year, maybe two years from now, maybe even six months. This alley-oop layup will turn into an alley-oop dunk. I don't think he needs to build any more strength to turn this into an alley-oop dunk. I just need think he needs to maybe prepare for these alley-oops maybe a bit earlier, understanding that he's wide open in the post, his teammates should be able to find him, and that can allow him to be able to get those alley-oop dunks much easier, kind of like how Victor Wembanyama does it. I also like right here where he's able to gather that ball super high. He keeps it away from his body, which could be troublesome at the NBA level when there's players who are collapsing in on him. However, he keeps it high. He keeps it chest high or higher. He chins it, essentially. And when he does that spin move, he does bring it down. I would like personally like him to keep it a bit higher. However, he's able to go up with his right hand, and we've seen, and this does go in, we've seen that he's able to do the spin the opposite way as well, so he's able to do these baby hooks with both his left and right hand. 
Right here, he's able to get that ball free. He's able to get down low. This is something that a lot of young, tall players can't do. Flexibility is sometimes an issue. He doesn't have that issue. He's able to get that steal. He's able to push that ball early enough in transition, and that was able to then help his teammate finish at the rim. He then followed up in case there was a miss, which there wasn't. I like the fact that he goes for these rebound dunks as well. It's very important. This clip right here where he's talking, this is extremely important too. Lots, lots of these highlights don't show players actually talking. And I really like that. I like the fact that he's talking. You can tell that he's on defense. He's talking to his teammates, telling him where to go. If you are a center, you are the leader of the defense. You need to tell your teammates where to go and what's going on. He's also really good at getting these chase down blocks. Well, when you're long and tall like he is, you can get those as well. There's a few things he needs to polish up. Some things like, for example, a quicker shot. Even though he's 7 feet tall, he's going to need to stretch that range. And he can already shoot those shots. But if he makes those a bit quicker, if he's able to maybe be ready a little bit earlier for alley-oop dunks, if he's able to get er, like ready earlier in the low post, getting off of those offensive rebounds or even feeds to the low post, if he can get ready and go into his move much quicker, he could be a much more successful player. But he's young. He's going to Duke next year. And, of course, Duke is a very good school with a very good coach. Will he be in the NBA? I'm going to say 99.9% .9 chance he will be in the NBA in a year or two. I'll see you guys again in my next video. Hit that like button and subscribe.